right? Uh, hi everyone, uh, I'm Min Song Kang from Georgia Tech. Uh, today I'm here to present Activist. Uh, this work, I started this work uh, when I was an intern at Facebook last year. And this joint work with uh, my internship mentor Pierre, Aditya, our team manager, and my advisor Apollo. So like the first two talks of this session, this talk is also about deep learning, of course. Uh, but it's a little different from those two talks in that we focus on how visual tools can be designed and deployed into the industry, specifically Facebook, and I'll talk about what we learned from our studies today. So as you know, deep learning has improved accuracy significantly and improved accuracy for many prediction tasks such as image recognition, natural language processing, and many other applications. However, understanding these models remains a big challenge. Uh, Deep learning models are relatively hard to understand because they use many, a lot of parameters to capture a non-linear structure of data. Because of that, many people use the models as black boxes, but this could make some problem, problems, especially when the model work does not work well. Uh, they do not know the causes and how to fix that, and they do not know, and they cannot trust the model. Uh, so visualization has become a powerful tool uh, to understanding and interpreting deep learning models. Uh, we are seeing an increasing number of visualization tools over the past couple of years. And one of the popular approaches to show activations for a given instance. Here for a cat image, we can show which neurons are active, highly activated from input layers to hidden layers to output layers. So in this way, users can explore the uh, neurons and why and this makes sense by uh, Facebook, like many other companies, has a large number of deep learning models and they wanted to develop such visualization tools for their models. And we found out that there are many unique design challenges if they want to uh, develop and deploy uh, tools something like something like the one I showed you in the previous slide. For example, models are very complex. Data sets are huge and diverse. So we wanted to develop a new tool activist for Facebook scale models and data. And, and I'd like to uh, show you, uh, to, to, to deeply understand like, all the challenges and requirements, uh, we have conducted a series of participatory design sessions with Facebook researchers, engineers, and data scientists since we started our project in April uh, 2016. Uh, first of all, there are many different types of deep learning models used by Facebook, and all the models are very complex. So while the many existing visualization, activation visualization tools assume there are a sequence of convolution and maxing layers, uh, in reality, models are usually represented as a graph-like structure, some, uh, like the figure here. And also, there are many operations hundreds of operations and like hundred thousands of neurons. Uh, so if we want if we show like all the activation in one screen, they may not fit in the screen. So we want to separate architecture from the activation details so that uh, they can start with the activation start with the overview and go into the activation details. Secondly, data sets are huge and diverse. Oftentimes uh, there are millions and billions of training instances and each instance is constructed from many different sources. Uh, often, a instance is represented as a high-dimensional vector, uh, transforms from in image, text, and well, categorical attributes using embedding techniques. Uh, this means that we want to use multiple approaches to dealing with this type of scalability challenges, but also at the same time, it might be opportunities for us because we make use of these diverse attributes by using some infobase techniques like filtering or grouping and grouping instances using these attribute information. Uh, finally, we wanted to understand how Facebook researchers, engineers uh, analyze the <coughs> learning results. Uh, and we found out that there are two key main analysis patterns. One is the instance level analysis, the other is subset level analysis. Uh, instance level analysis means uh, they take an instance and try to see how models respond to that instance. In the case of deep neural nets, uh, 
uh, they want to see which neurons are highly activated for a given image, like the one I showed you in the previous slide. Uh, this is particularly useful for debugging, uh, as introduced in uh, several papers. However, it does not scale because we have to pick one instance from a large number of instances. So we learned that instead, Facebook, people, Facebook researchers like to use subset level analysis. Here, they want to see how models behave at higher level categorization. For example, they want to see whether a model works well for certain topics or certain groups of users. So this is particularly useful for huge data sets because it provides top-down analysis. And these two types of analysis are both useful. We, so we, tried, we wanted to integrate both analytics patterns in our tool. So to summarize all the challenges we learned from our design sessions, models are complex, data sets are huge, and there are two analytics patterns. So based on that, we uh, set our three main design goals. One is to add model overview as an entry point to the detailed activation. Secondly, we want to use multiple approaches to the only scalability. And finally, we would like to have a unified analysis for both instance and subset level analysis. Uh, so based on that, we developed activists with Facebook researchers and engineers, which is a visualization of activation for their deep learning models, and is deployed on uh, their machine learning platform. And I'd like to show you a demo of our tool. Uh, I'll be, here I'll be using a text classification example using a public data set. Uh, this data set uh, is to classify a question sentence into one of those six classes, such as number, location, abbreviation. So for example, given a sentence, where is Phoenix located? It should be classified as the location. So this is an initial view when users first, first launch activists. Uh, users first start with this uh, computation graph view, which shows model architecture. Uh, users can zoom and pan this graph to find interesting nodes they want to look at. Uh, when they find a node they want to look at, for example, here FC0 is the output of the last hidden layer. Uh, they can click this node to see a detailed activation for this node. Uh, then a new panel is shown on the bottom, which shows the detailed activation for the selected node FC0. Uh, here, the main part is the neuron matrix view uh, in the middle. Yeah, this one. And it's like a matrix, so we have columns and rows. Each column represents a neuron. Here, you can see like 23 neurons. And each row represents an instant subset. For example, uh, the first row represents a set of instances whose true class is DESP, one of the six classes. And each cell represents uh, the corresponding neuron's average activation strength for that subset. So you can see which neurons are highly activated for that instance subset. And we have uh, several rows, several instance subsets like this. This is for the second class. And users can also specify user-defined subsets. Here is a text classification data set, so they specify subsets based on whether a text has a particular trait. Uh, on the right side of the panel, we have a projected view. Here, each point represents an instance colored by its true class. You can see there are six colors here. We have six classes. And this, this view is interlinked with the matrix view uh, on the left side. So when users bounce over one of the subset rows, users can see how the corresponding instances are distributed in this Disney projected space. So you can see like how they are distributed and for each of the subsets. Uh, and on the right side of the panel, we have the instance selection panel for adding instances. Here each square represents an instance and they are positioned based on their true class label vertically and whether they are correctly predicted by the model or not. For some reason. Uh, let's say users are interested in this brown color class of bottom location class. Uh, then users can bounce over one of the instance boxes and they can see detailed information about each instance. You can see like, label and prediction scores for that instance. Also at the same time on the left side, uh, a new mode is added to this instance basis view. So users can see which neurons are highly activated for that instance on the uh, right side. 
So users can keep adding these instances by uh, interacting with the establish panel. Uh, then users can see or can users can compare which nuance are actually good for each of the instances. Now I have added uh, three correctly predicted instances, and now I'm adding two misclassified instances to see like how patterns are different from the correctly predicted ones. Uh, so I have, now I have three correctly predicted ones and two misclassified ones, and you start you can see some patterns, but this becomes more clear if we sort all the nuance by the uh, location class, which is the true class for all the instances of the class. So now you can see like three uh, three rows are correctly predicted instances are possibly correlated, while the misclassified is the best located correlated. So you can just do some exploration like in this type of fashion. Uh, so so a quick recap of the demo I showed you. So we have a unique uh, exists provides unified analysis for comparing for the comparative analysis of instances and subsets. Uh, subsets can be defined by users. Instances can be dynamically added. Uh, we also tightly integrate model architecture, activation, and instances to uh, explore this large model. Uh, I haven't talked much about in the demo, but we have some tailored user approach, which I'd like to show you in the next slide. First of all, uh, we first approach we use is user guided instance sampling. Uh, we have many instances in the instance selection panel. Uh, so what we did is we performed sampling to show a representative sample of instances. Uh, but at the same time, uh, user, users for uh, those who want to add specific instances, they can add that. This is particularly useful for people who uh, maintain their test cases. Uh, for example, they know this instance, what does that mean, should be satisfied at every disaggregation class, and they want to see the model works really uh, okay for, uh, for this instance. And users can add those instances to the sampling process. The other approach we use is the selective pre computation for important nodes. You know, we have hundreds, thousands of operation nodes. So one challenge is if we cannot compute, it's, it's okay, but we don't want to compute all the activation for all the thousands of uh, block nodes. So we observed and learned that often only a few nodes are important for interpretation, and model, model developers know that. So we let model developers specify these important nodes by default. So that we are going to pre-compute only these uh, yellow nodes, as shown in the yellow nodes here. And also, if users want to add their specific nodes, they can add them on the plot and set up the uh, Activist is deployed on FD Learner, uh, Facebook's machine learning platform, uh, used by most Facebook uh, machine learning engineers at Facebook. Uh, users can create all the experiments using their web based interface. So on, the, on the left side, when training is done, uh, this, this interface provides a result page like this figure. And we, what we did is we added a link to this view. So just by clicking it, users can uh, launch activists for their models. Uh, and if a new model is implemented by a mo by model developers, they can just simply they can simply add three API function calls to the code for their models. Uh, then so. So everything is done by Active Learner. So a link is created to here, so users can open up Activist without writing any code. Uh, we conducted case studies with three Facebook engineers and data scientists uh, who created text classification models on Active Learner. Uh, and each participant used uh, Activist with for their data set and gave us feedback. Uh, here we summarize three key observations from the case studies. Uh, first of all, activists help them for spot checking models with their test cases. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, they have the automated in test cases. And for example, they know that uh, sentences like this should be classified as location, and this is the first step of uh, debugging the uh, working with the model. Secondly, our testing graph view was especially helpful for people uh, who work with uh, people who are less familiar with the deep learning models. Uh, this helps them understand the models first and dive into application details. 
Also, we show visual patterns, so users can use these visual patterns to get some hints for further improving the model for, uh, for changing the healthcare type of practice. There are interesting future research directions. First of all, while I this enables users to define, flexibly define subsets in many different ways, uh, it will be interesting if we can recommend some subsets they should look at and they can, if they can explore interactively, that will be great. Also, we focus on, while we focus on uh, one way of perceptual, it will be interesting if we can also support in models whose number of demands depend on the input, input data size and how we can define subset for those data sets. Also, it would be great if we can uh, provide some actionable insights about how they can further improve the performance. So, to summarize, we present Activist, a visual analytics tool for Facebook's deep neural as deployed on their machine learning platform. And we mainly support subset level analysis and we tightly integrate three of course, That's all for my presentation. Thank you very much.